So in this video, I would like to derive the volume of a sphere, and I'm going to use spherical coordinates to do that. It's going to be much simpler than using uh, Cartesian coordinates. So suppose we have a sphere of radius A, and we would like to uh, derive its volume. Its volume is 4 over 3 pi uh, A cubed. A in this case is our uh, radius. So we want to derive that formula. So let me remind you quickly what spherical coordinates are. So Here's our x, y, uh, z uh, three-dimensional space. So instead of using x, y, z coordinates, we're going to use r, uh, theta, and phi. So r is the distance from the origin to our uh, point in space. Uh, and then theta is the angle that the line that connects the origin to p, our point p, makes with the z-axis. So this is theta. And then phi is the angle that the x-axis makes with the line that connects the origin to the projection of the point P on the xy plane. This is uh, P, bar. P bar is the projection of, of our point on the xy plane. So this angle here is, uh, is theta, is phi. So if we were, if we were going to use uh, Cartesian coordinates, then our line elements uh, would have been dx, dy, and dz, and our volume element would have been the product of these three, dx times dy times dz. So in spherical coordinates, uh, we need to find the, the three line elements that we're going to use. So for r, for the coordinate r, the line element is just uh, dr. For theta, so if you picture here that we increase our angle from theta by a small angle, let's call it uh, d theta. So our point P is going to move in space with this small arc here, and let's call this angle d theta. So th the point here is going to traverse a small arc, and the length of this arc is going to be r times d theta. So just a quick reminder, if we have a circle here with radius r, and then we have an arc and the angle that's up tends that arc is equal to theta, and theta is in radians, then the length of the arc is equal to uh, the radius times the angle itself. So this is the same here. We have our small incremental angle d theta, and the length of the arc is going to be uh, r times uh, d theta. So that, that's the, com that's the uh, line element for the theta component. For the phi component, so if we hold everything else constant, and then we increase uh, phi by a small angle d phi, then the projected point here, so if you can imagine that we increase this by a small angle called d phi, then our uh, projected point here is going to traverse a small arc, and the length of this arc is going to be uh, the radius, which is this radius here, which is different than r, times, uh, times d phi. And the length of uh, of the projection, the length from O to P bar is just R sine theta, and I've I've drawn that right angle triangle uh, externally. So O is our origin, P is our point, and then P is the projection, and this is a right angle triangle. So if we draw that here, we have R is the length from O to P, P is our projection, the angle that uh, this angle here uh, is theta. And so the length from O to our projection is just R sine theta. So our line element here has a length of R times sine theta d phi. So that is our third line element. So it's R sine theta d phi. So our volume element, this is in spherical coordinates, is going to be the product of these three, which is R squared sine theta dr, d theta, d phi. So the volume of our sphere, so volume is going to be the integral of dv, so it's going to be the triple integral of r squared sine theta dr, d theta, d phi. And now we need to find the limits of our integral. So if we have a volume element inside of our sphere, let's call this dv, so we need to be able to 
move this uh, volume element all over the sphere in order to compute the entire volume. So, so to do that, the volume element needs to move, first of all, from the center of the sphere all the way to the edge of the sphere. So when we integrate over r, the integral has to be from r equals 0 all the way up to the radius, which is equal to a. How about phi? Well, if we have a volume element that's, that's here and we're trying to scan through the entire uh, volume of the sphere, then we need to rotate our element all the way, all through the entire 360 degrees. So, so phi needs to be from 0 to 2 pi, so to cover the entire 360 degrees. Now for our angle theta, theta equals 0 is going to be when let's say our element here is aligned with the z-axis, and it needs to go from 0 all the way to the other side, which is going to be from 0 to pi. So our angle here, theta, is going to be equal to 0 all the way to uh, pi. Not 2 pi, just pi. So even though this is a triple integral, but it's actually a, a very simple one. There's no dependency among the three integrals. All, all three are independent. So we actually can split this triple integral into three separate integrals. So we have the first integral from r equals 0 to a of r squared dr, and then the second integral is going to be from theta equals 0 to pi of sine theta d theta, and the last integral is going to be from 0 to 2, po 2 pi of d phi. So the first integral, the integral of r squared, is going to be r cubed divided by 3. And the limits of the integration is going to be from 0 to a. The second integral, integral of sine theta, is going to be minus sine theta. But I'm going to write it as cosine theta. And instead of putting pi and 0, I'm going to flip the order here. So it becomes 0 and pi. So I flip the order because the integral of sine theta is negative cosine theta. And our last integral here is integral of d phi is just d phi, is just phi, and then the limits of the integration is from 0 to pi. So if we evaluate, so if you evaluate first evaluation at a is going to be a cubed divided by 3, the second term is going to evaluate to 0. For the second term, cosine theta minus cosine pi, cosine theta, uh, let's write it first, cosine 0 minus cosine pi and then the last term is going to be 2 pi minus 0. So first term evaluates to a3 divided by 3. Second term is going to be 1 minus and cosine pi is minus 1 so it's minus minus 1 and the third term is 2 pi. So this equals a cubed over 3 Second term is going to be 2, third term is going to be 2 pi, and that equals 4 over 3 pi a cubed. And this is the formula that we were trying to derive.